In this game, Grandmaster Isaac Boleslavsky sacrificed a pawn in the opening and grabbed the initiative. However, in the critical moment of the game, Boleslavsky's rook was under attack, and in case he moved it, his opponent, Grandmaster Salomon Flor, would castle, solve all his problems and would simply be up a pawn. However, it was Boleslavsky's move, and he had to make a critical decision, either to save the rook and get a worse position, or to sacrifice more material and start the king hunt. Boleslavsky started with e4, Flor played the Karokan defense, now the main line of course is d4, but Boleslavsky opted for a rare variation, knight f3, d5, knight c3. Bishop g4, pinning the knight, h3, the exchange on f3 took place, and after e6, the quiet move would have been d3, but Boleslavsky had in mind a pawn sacrifice for the initiative, he played more actively d4. And after knight f6, bishop d3, d takes e, as you see, the pawn on d4 is unguarded, so sac Boleslavsky sacrificed it. After knight takes d4, Flor accepted the sacrifice, queen takes d4, but this lets Boleslavsky develop his dark squared bishop with tempo, bishop e3, leaving the b2 pawn unguarded too. So, this is the sacrifice of the second pawn, but it would have been too dangerous to accept the second sacrifice, because after queen takes b2, attacking the rook, white would simply castle kingside, and black is terribly behind in development, as you see, and the king is still in the center. Besides that, the queen would become the target of attack. After rook b1, the white rook will also be developed with tempo, attacking the queen, and if the queen retreats, after it retreats, the b7 pawn would fall and the rook would invade the 7th rank. That's why after bishop e3, Flor declined the sacrifice of the second pawn and retreated on d8, but now long castle and the rook on d1 is very actively placed and creates very unpleasant x-ray. Knight d7, bishop c4, opening the rook's file, and also the bishop on c4 is actively placed, creating some possibilities of the sacrifice on e6. Queen a5, bishop d2 attacking the queen, queen b6, rook e1. And here Flor made a serious mistake. Instead of bishop e7 finishing the development, followed by the short castle, after which actually it wouldn't be so clear if Boleslavsky's initiative uh, was enough compensation for a sacrificed pawn or not? Most probably not. However, instead of bishop e7, black captured on e4. Actually, it makes sense to, to exchange pieces when you are under attack and when your opponent uh, has the initiative. However, not in this position. Boleslavsky captures on e4 and the second mistake follows. Now we can see Flor's idea. So at the moment, uh, black, of course, cannot castle queenside. Black would love to castle queenside, but it would leave the f7 pawn unguarded and white would simply capture it. That's why before castling queenside, Flor plays knight f6 with tempo, attacking the rook. And if the rook retreats, now the f7 pawn is defended, so the knight is blocking the queen's uh, line, and if the rook retreats, black can simply castle queenside and would solve his problems, his queen king uh, safety problem, and would simply be a pawn up. However, knight f6 is a terrible mistake. Probably it would have been much better to play knight c5, because on c5 the knight is defending the pawn on e6. But after knight f6, of course, Boleslavsky didn't retreat his rook, but sacrificed the bishop. While the king is still in the center, it is his last chance to start a strong attack. Bishop takes e6. Of course, black cannot capture the rook, because that would be followed by checkmate in two moves. Queen takes f7 check and queen d7 checkmate. That's why black accepts the sacrifice of the bishop. f takes e. But now rook takes e6 check. So, of course, Flor saw the typical sacrifice of the bishop on e6. But as Grandmaster David Branstein, who annotated this game, uh, writes, most probably Flor 
sought that this sacrifice on E6 is in his favor. However, Boleslavsky calculated the variations further than Flor, and uh, he found brilliant ways of attack, as you will see. So, what to do now? King f7 doesn't work. It's a natural looking move. The king moves to f7, attacks the rook. However, Boleslavsky prepared a deadly rook takes f6 check, eliminating the only defender of the king, the knight, and also destroying the pawn structure on the king side. After g takes f, queen h5 check with great effect would have followed. And now, if the king moves to e7, then of course, rook e1 check and queen f7 check with checkmate in a few moves. If king g7, then of course, bishop h6 check would follow. And of course, again, white is winning on the spot after the great, uh, after the invasion on the seventh rank with the great effect. Queen f7 checkmate is threat. And the finally, if king g8, then queen g4 check. In this case, white starts very sophisticated queen maneuvers after king f7, queen c4 check. Now, if king g7, then bishop e3 with tempo opening the rook's way to d7, attacking the queen, and uh, there is nothing black can do against it. For example, queen b4, then rook d7 check, and queen f7 check, and that leads to uh, checkmate, of course. Queen f6, threatening checkmate on f4, and the rook is also under attack. And if after queen c4 check, instead of king g7, the king moves to g6, then a very beautiful variation would follow. Queen e4 check, king f7. Now the rook is ready to invade d7 with great effect, but there is one obstacle on its way, the bishop. But the bishop can move away with tempo. Bishop a5 attacking the queen. Of course, black cannot capture it because rook d7 check would lead to immediate checkmate. However, black could have played bishop h6 check with tempo connecting the rooks. And after king b1, rook d8, leaving the queen under attack but threatening checkmate. Of course, a white cannot capture the queen, but the sophisticated queen maneuvers would have continued in this case. Queen c4 check, and after the king moves to the g file, queen g4 check with tempo defending the rook. And after that, white, of course, can capture the queen and win. So, after rook takes e6 check, king f7 doesn't work. So, floor played bishop e7, but now rook d1 attacking the pinned bishop for the second time. And probably, as Branstein writes in his annotations, Flor agreed to let Boleslavsky sacrifice on e6, his bishop on e6, because he relied on short castle, leaving his bishop under attack, but after rook takes e7, knight d5, with a discovered attack on the queen, and also the rook would be under attack. However, probably after bishop takes e6, Flor saw what Boleslavsky prepared in this variation, in this case. You can pause the video and try to find Boleslavsky's great move in case this position had uh, arisen in this game. What to do? The queen is under attack and the rook is under attack. So, in this case, Boleslavsky would have sacrificed the rook and would have started a deadly attack after king takes g7. The rook would love to invade the seventh rank, but the knight is defending e7. But there is a simple way to distract the knight from d5. Bishop c3 check. The bishop is simply intolerable. Black must eliminate it, but after knight takes c3, the knight isn't defending e7 anymore, and the rook invades with great effect. And after king h6, queen takes c3, black is a rook up, however, the rook isn't doing anything, and the queen is also placed on the queen side, and the king is all alone on the king side, and the queen, together with the rook and with the g-pawn, in case a king moves to uh, h5, would simply 
checkmates the black king. That's why after rook uh, e1, Flor played knight d5, defending the bishop. But of course, Boleslavsky attacks the pinned bishop for the third time, and there is no way black can defend it. So Flor simply castled queenside, and after the exchange on e7, Boleslavsky was a pawn up. However, Floor prepared a devilish trap. After rook f8, queen g4 check and king uh, b8, queen takes g7, Floor captures on f2 with the queen. And white actually can capture the b7 pawn with tempo, with check. And it looks like uh, white is winning on the spot. However, the opposite is the case. In case Boleslavsky captured the pawn on b7, he would have lost on the spot because of king a8. And it turns out that black has two deadly threats. Queen takes e7 checkmate and queen d2 check. And after the king retreats, checkmate on the back rank in two moves. And there is nothing white can do to parry the boss threats. Besides that, the queen cannot leave the seventh rank as it must protect the rook, which is attacked by the king. Of course, Boleslavsky didn't fall into this trap, and instead of capturing on b7, he played b3, opening the escape square for his king. Floor played rook g8, attacking the queen, queen takes h7, rook takes g2. Now, now that there is then an escape square for the king, Boleslavsky can safely capture on b7. And after king a8, rook e7, queen c5, h4, a5. Rook e8, queen d4, again, black is threatening checkmate, that's why king b1. Rook d2, the exchange of the rooks, queen e4, attacking c6, queen f6, and h5, in this hopeless position, Floor finally resigned. And now I recommend watching David Branstein's masterclass in a creative attack. First, he sacrificed two pawns and the rook to seize the initiative and then started the second wave of attack, which resulted in a king hunt. But first, don't forget to like this video and subscribe, as it's really helpful for the channel growth.